welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on RCS and SAS. Now uh, the first thing of course we're going to do is quickly add them on. So we have uh, two components, that being the RCS tanks. The RCS of course helps you move when you are in space. It means if I want to turn in space, if I want to move up, down, rotate around, the RCS pretty much does that for you. That's why you'd want to place RCS on your actual rocket itself. Now the question is where would be the most effective place to place your actual RCS? Well that's pretty simple. The best place to place your RCS is on the opposite ends of your center of mass. So if you click your center of mass, you see the icon it shows, here's my center of mass. What I would want to do then is I'd want to place my RCS units, I'll put symmetry on 4, or actually this is a small ship, 2 would be enough. What I'd want to do is place my RCS at the opposite ends of the actual center of mass. It means I'll have one here, and then I'd have another one as high as possible, which means there. No, I should have put clip. And there. That's where you'd want to place it. You'd want to place it as uh, high as possible from your center of mass and as low as possible from your center of mass. Now, let's uh, launch this rocket into actual space and uh, I'll show you exactly what this does. So let's put on a couple of boosters. And I'll see you guys in space. Let's launch it up. And then we will demonstrate what RCS does. Now I'm heading into space with my actual rocket. I did already let go of my actual boosters. And now you see I'm trying to keep it stable at 90 degrees because I don't have my... Uh, RCS. I'm going to keep. Uh, I'm going to keep needing to adjust it by myself manually using the W, S, A, and D keys. But I do have my S, A, S. So we are nearly in orbit. I do believe I have plenty of fuel to get the orbit. There is. See, it's uh, very wobbly. It does get out of uh, get out of its actual target. I do want to keep it stable at this point, and it keeps moving around. So I do have to manually always adjust it to make sure that it sticks to that point. Now, if uh, I'm going to keep moving it down and up, and uh, our orbit should hopefully be there. So, uh, you see I do need to keep adjusting it, because we don't have our uh, RCS. But first, as I did say, I will try to explain to you what SAS does. So, you see it is a little bit of a hassle without the RCS, as I can't keep it locked on one position, even with my SAS on. It just doesn't stick on that position. So uh, I'll be back again once I do have my orbit and I'll explain to you what the actual RCS is used for. So here we are in space and now with only SAS component on our actual ship. Now because the ship is small if I use my W, A and S, D keys it sort of does move now. But if you have a bigger ship it's a little bit difficult to move it as easily as it is now. But if you switch on your RCS look at how at how much movement additional movement you have. You know this is using your actual RCS that's why it is great or pretty much a necessity to put RCS actual modules on your ship or these thrusters on your actual ship. Now if your ship is big obviously you don't have to put a lot of them just make sure it's on the opposite of center of mass at the top and at the bottom part. Uh, depending on how big your ship is you will have a good idea on how many of these components you need to add to your actual ship. But that's pretty much it. You see the left and right if I want to move right, if I want to move left. Look at how quickly it moves and without my RCS if I want to move left it's moving much slower. And if I want to move right again it takes time. You see it's out of control now. So what I can do is put my RCS and stop that from happening. Normally it wouldn't stop but with the RCS help it pretty much did the trick. So this is in terms of why you should use your RCS and where exactly you should place your RCS components. Now to give you an example, if we have a much larger ship, let's say we're gonna have a much larger ship with a, a greater stage count, 
and uh, for some for some reason let's say that you will manage to get this ship into space hold on let's uh, get this correct stick on it. Okay, let's try a smaller tank then. Smaller tank works. But that's not what I wanted to show. Hold on, let's then put structures. We will have a uh, Let's try the different decouplers, maybe. Ah, oh, it doesn't work because uh, there's no space. There's no space, hold on. I think this should hopefully work. Nope! It doesn't work. So never mind, so if you did have a big ship like this one, again, you put on the center of mass, and you'll try to put your RCS... Uh, components on the opposite ends of the center of mass. So control, so I'd stick it as high as possible. Now with a big ship like this, maybe two won't be enough, maybe four. So I'd have uh, four RCS thrusters at the top and four RCS thrusters at the bottom. You know, so I did have four at the top. Let me just switch this to four at the bottom as well. And uh, there, now we have four at the top and four at the bottom, it should help it work. Now if you have, let's say, four more of these tanks around, which for some reason I can't seem to do, but uh, if I had four more of these tanks around, then I wouldn't put the RCS in the center, because that'd be just a waste. I'd pretty much put the RCS on the other tanks. And maybe I just put two, so let's give it another go now. Hopefully we'll get it to work this time. Nope, it doesn't want to work, so... Just for example's sake, let's say we had these tanks were the four large orange ones. So I'd put two at the top, most of the tanks, which would be somewhere here, and uh, four at the bottom, and I would remove these. So generally I would have eight RCS thrusters, two at the top, and uh, I mean four at the top and four at the bottom across the whole ship. Now again, remember your RCS uh, does run out, so make sure you use these wisely. Now it's also been mentioned that your actual linear thrusters use uh, less RCS when you use them, so I sometimes uh, haven't tested it lately, but I sometimes do try to use the linear RCS ports. So instead of, let's say, having one large uh, standard, you can say R RCS block, I put the linear ones. And you can see the thrust power, it's 1.0, and this one also 1.0. But unfortunately, these only blow one way. Remember, you're pretty much blowing gas in four different directions. So what I'll do is I'll put, let's say, one there, and then I'll put one at the top. And then I'd put one at the bottom. And then on the side, right, and then on the left. And that's pretty much the RCS block that blows up, down. Remember the block already has up, down, right, and left. You'd have to place these individually up, down, right, and left and backwards on your actual ship itself. This uses much less gas, but the uh, disadvantage is, of course, you need to place these in the actual four points, so you have the four axes covered in terms of using your gas. Well, this is in terms of the RCS. Now, let's switch to the SAS. SAS, you have two types of SAS components. You have the standard SAS, which pretty much stops your ship from rotating and uses an actual force to stop it from spinning out of control. So in case your ship is spinning just ridiculously out of control or spinning on its own axis, you put on the SAS and that'll stop it from actually spinning out of control. So uh, just to give you an example, it probably won't work the best way on this actual example, but I'll just show it to you. So we have the ship, I'm gonna put up the accelerator and shoot it into space. Now on purpose, I'm gonna spin the ship out of control. You see, I am trying to spin it more and more out of control. Now, uh, when I hit my SAS on, it'll stop that from happening. So I'll put SAS on, it pretty much stops the spin immediately, if not in a few seconds. So if your ship is spinning out of control and you want it to stop spinning out of control, you can put on your actual SAS to do that for you. Now, uh, let's go back to the actual 
lab itself and now we have the advanced SAS module now the difference with the advanced and standard is the advanced doesn't actually use any force remember your uh, standard SAS uses a force to sort of prevent the spin now the advanced uses other components to stop you from spinning so uh, the cool thing about this is it uses RCS and uh, you can say fins to stop you from turning. So if you actually want to use your advanced module, make sure you have fins on it. Let's do that. Let's put on a couple of fins, movable fins. Here are a couple of fins. Let's put four of these fins or three of these fins. And if we put on an RCS component as well, it'll use RCS as well. So it pretty much uses your fins, your movable fins. Make sure they're movable that you can actually use and move the damn fins. And uh, it has uses RCS as well. So let me give you an example of what the advanced does. Let's put on four. Let's put on this. And then let's put on that. And then let's launch it. Remember in the first launch I showed you, I couldn't pretty much control the plane. I couldn't keep it locked on one position on the globe. So hopefully I get that was a little bit too heavy. Let's stick more of these on. Structure and uh, this should hopefully solve the problem. To stop that from happening, I could have pulled the crane, but whatever, I'll just do it this way. Now, this is the cool thing with using the advanced SAS. It doesn't use any force, it actually uses external things such as your fins and your RCS to keep you into place. So let's launch. Okay. And now you see it's already bending down. Let's say it's moving down. So if, I, if I'm going to hit uh, the A key, and I'm going to try to get it where I wanted to get it. So let's get it here. And then I'm going to switch on my SAS like now. Now look, automatically the SAS is controlling my fins. It's like an autopilot in a way. It's using my fins to keep it in place. Now, if I switched on my RCS, it'll again use my RCS as well. It'll burn my RCS in the correct positions to keep it in place. I hope that makes sense. It's sort of an autopilot. So in space, obviously, the RCS is not very uh, effective in the atmosphere, but in space is very effective to keep it locked into place. So if I'm trying to stay locked into a position, an autopilot, into a certain point, I can switch on my SAS, and if I have fins, it'll actually use those fins and maneuver the fins. You see very, very so quickly, millions and millions of maneuvers per second. That just sounds cool. Probably not millions, but a lot of maneuvers per second to keep you locked onto that current position. So again, let's say I'll move here. Let's say I'll start moving here. And I'll keep it locked to that position. You see it'll stay locked to that position. Now as you leave the atmosphere, remember the fins don't work as effectively because there's a less atmosphere. So then I'll switch on my RCS and then I'll let my advanced SAS use my RCS to keep me in position, keep me in place. I hope that makes sense. So for example, if I'm at 37,000 meters, pretty much once the surface changes to orbit, my fins are pretty pointless because that's the end of that. There's no atmosphere, no wind to keep me in position. So then I'll uh, switch my RCS on, which pretty much gives access for my SAS module to use my RCS module to keep me in place. So I really hope that makes sense. Now, uh, what's the point of having then the standard uh, SAS instead of your advanced SAS. Sometimes the ship spins out of control, starts to wobble. So what uh, people sometimes like to do is, uh, for example, if you have a large, large ship, they would have different more and more, you can say, uh, rockets and fuel tanks around. So they'd put a lot of standard SAS modules on those components, on those additional rockets that get dropped off. So that prevents the ship from wobbling, that prevents the ship from spinning out of control. You put a lot of uh, these uh, modules, standard SAS modules, on those components components and as your stages separate you just drop them off and that is the end of that so you see now i'm in orbit so you see the fins now even though they're still working they're not as effective see now I'm moving left it's not so i put on my rcs and you see my rcs pretty much now takes control because once i'm in orbit see now it's spinning i switch on the sas it stops it from spinning now the fins obviously are pointless but automatically the uh, advanced SAS uses the fins because that's it's a program but it doesn't really make any sense in space as you saw I tried to spin in space I try to move in space like for example now I'm trying to move left and nothing is happening I'm moving the opposite way I'm trying to move left and nothing is happening I'm trying to move right now towards the actual yellow circle look how slow it is you know, look how slow it is. But if I put on my RCS, look how quick I move to that position. And if I let go, let's say if I'm still burning, 
If I'm still burning, you see my ship is automatically moving out of position. So I'll lock onto this. I'll switch on my SAS. And the, uh, the advanced SAS will automatically use the RCS to keep me in position. For example, now I have my SAS activated and my RCS as well. So that means my SAS, advanced SAS, uh, has access to my RCS gas as well. And if I'm in space, as you saw, uh, you, pretty much the fins don't do anything, so you need your RCS to keep you in that position. So think of it as an autopilot. Now, the cool thing is, uh, this can be used as well in terms of your actual planes. I don't see a lot of people doing that, but uh, a lot of people do try to adjust their actual planes. Let's see, let's maybe pull up a stock plane. If you want to keep your plane locked in a, a specific position, you know, what I like to do is I like to have an SAS, advanced SAS component, because that pretty much controls my fins and uh, keeps me uh, locked in that position. So it's sort of an autopilot. So let's uh, hopefully get that clicked on. It was there. There we go. So I did put on my advanced SAS, as you saw. Normally, what people do is uh, they'll try to adjust their actual... Uh, They'll, they'll, they'll uh, trim their actual controls so they have a smooth control over it. But uh, I, I don't really trim much of my controls. What I do is I like to have an advanced SAS module because my advanced SAS modules would use these fins and keep me in place. So, for example, I want to go at 90 degrees and I want to stay there. So since I have my advanced module, I'll do that and then I'll just switch on my advanced SAS module. See, automatically it uses my fins. It uses all my fins to pretty much stick in place. It's not the most effective way, but sometimes you might need more fins to keep you locked in that place. But for now, for this plane you see, it does pretty much keep me as close as possible or gives me an autopilot to head in that specific direction. Now, in this case, of course, I don't have enough fin control. So it sometimes does veer off uh, the cr its actual course that I stick it on. So for example, if I move it at 90 and then I switch on my advanced SAS, it should pretty much keep me pointed at the 90 degree angle all the damn time. But uh, from looking at this plane, I see that I don't have enough control surfaces, meaning these flaps. So even though it is trying to autocorrect the advanced SAS, it can't keep it into place. So I have to switch it off and always use my manual control. So a lot of people don't do this in terms of their plane construction, but I like to do this because I pretty much have an autopilot. So as long as you stick on advanced SAS module, make sure you have enough of uh, surface control components such as flaps and uh, various flaps, as you see, uh, rudders here. And uh, your advanced SAS will pretty much keep you on course. So again, I switched it on. It is keeping me on course. Again, it's slowly veering off course, so I do need more, you can say, surface control for my SAS to properly control and keep that ship on the actual target point. So I like to do this because, you know, why not? It's... Uh, pretty much an autopilot for your actual space or your actual planes or your space planes so so that so that's pretty cool so that's about it in terms of what the uh, SAS does an RCS you know just to summarize it your actual RCS is gas that helps you uh, that ejects on your actual plane and helps you move around in space which you pretty much need because you can't move at all your uh, SAS is uh, a control module the standard SAS uses a force to move your ship you can use your actual if you have small ships in space you don't even need to use your RCS you can move using the force of the standard SAS component your advanced SAS component you needs it doesn't have any force but it needs uh, other components to make it work I call that like an autopilot it means to have your advanced SAS work you need other components such as RCS thrusters you need flaps and fins and other movable control parts which your SAS component uses to keep it locked on course so uh, that's pretty much it I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope it did fill in a few things and uh, as always, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and uh, see you guys in another tutorial. Bye.